Hey Malcontents, it's Mal, and I'm here to talk to you today about some really serious shit. It's crazy, it's exciting, and it required me to like get a little bit authoritarian with you. I want to make sure that like you believe what I'm saying. You respect my authority, as one Esquire Cartman might have said. Um, Car Cartman Esquire? Not sure which way that goes. Either way, I'm like here to lay down the law about gender sex, chromosomes, and hormones. Finger for estrogen and testosterone. But like, you know, I kind of, I was wearing like a regular shirt before and I thought, you know what, I gotta, I gotta step it up a notch. And this morning I decided to try some purple makeup and then I did purple lips and I did purple eyebrows and purple contouring and purple wig and it just, it just went purple and it went goth and that's just, that's just where we're staying for the day, okay? You just have to deal, just have to deal. Also, check out these amazing boots, yes, yes. Yes, they're gorgeous. They, uh, I put lights mounted in, that's what those little bumps were. At nighttime, they um, they really like glow and they make it look like you're walking on these pools of light. So it's pretty sweet. So anyway, uh, after doing my, lap, my previous video and I sort of touched on like how chromosomes don't really matter, except that they do, um, <laughs> someone asked me to kind of expound upon that a little bit. And some of the stuff's kind of interesting. Like you have to remember in many respects that for what most people know about the world, they know what their teachers knew when their teachers left school. So if you think about that, so you've got someone who was in school in the 60s, which maybe is you or your parents, that person probably was taught by someone who went to school in the 50s. And the textbooks that they were taught from, well, they were written like in the 40s and early 50s. And we didn't really even know jack about DNA at that point. Actually, I should have looked up what the discovery of DNA was, but I'm, I'm actually relatively certain that we basically knew that we probably have DNA and chromosomes back then. And that was like, yeah, we didn't know what they did. And even like the mapping of the human genome to know what, which is knowing what all of the chromosomes, what all the instruction sets in the DNA strands are contained in our 46 ish chromosomes was finished in like what, 2013? Like we're not even a decade past mapping the human genome yet. And we're certainly not a decade into having, knowing a, having a clue what most of it does. Um, the only reason why we know that men and women have different DNA is because it looks different and it actually only looks different at certain times. Most of the time, male and female DNA, the X and the Y chromosomes just look like two little strands sitting beside each other. It's only when they divide that you can actually tell that the, that the shape changes enough that the one sort of has an X shape and one has a bit of a Y -ish shape. Um, but that's just basically to say this is all really new. So when someone, when someone says to you like, oh, well, you know, it's, it's XX and it's XY and that's it. It's like, yeah, put away your 1950s textbook or perhaps, you know, what your teacher who learned this shit from someone who learned it in the 1950s told you. And like, let's look at some new information. So something that's really neat when it comes to like, what is gender is that, uh, and sex, which I'm gonna talk a little bit about. Actually, I'll talk about it right now. Why not, right? So sex is a word that we use, I mean, to basically describe what your genitals look like. Because when a doc, when you come out of the womb or, you know, out of the, the C-section, they look at you and they say, that looks like boy parts, that looks like girl parts, and they assign a sex to you based on that. They're not checking your DNA, they're not looking to see if like, you know, you have like the organs from a twin that you absorbed inside your body, which frickin' happens. Um, they're not looking at anything other than just this one singular external identifier to determine if you're male or female, and then they write that in the birth certificate, and that's what you are for the rest of your life. But as it turns out, things are a lot more complex than that. Um, there's a lot of variances, and there's actually interesting things like, I mean, just to toss it out there, the Y chromosome is relatively new, evolutionarily speaking. Um, you don't actually need a Y chromosome to contain the gene that tells the body to develop male, male um, secondary and primary sex characteristics or female secondary and primary sex characteristics. Um, and so, so that's what your sex is. That's right, I had to like, you know, I'm not wearing a blonde wig today, so I came back from that segue a little bit faster. But like, that's what your what your primary sex characteristics, or that's what your sex is. It's 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 the primary sex characteristics that are very obvious upon birth, that you are, you know, a boy or a girl. Um, it doesn't mean that you're fertile. It doesn't mean that you have a for girl doesn't mean you have a uterus. You know, it doesn't mean you have ovaries. No one checks. They just look at the outside, make a decision, and move on. Your gender is a lot more tied to other biological parts of your body and neurological parts. And the interesting thing is that you're neurons are biological so when you talk about like what's well, in your head it's like yeah and it's part of the structure of your brain because the structure of your brain and the actual interconnected wiring of the neurons 
and who, what connects to what and how it fires and what behaves in what way is just as much a part of, of you, who you are, as any other part of you. And much of that is actually developed ba based on the DNA that you have. Um, it's also based on your environment before age five and a whole host of other things that we're really just still wrapping our minds around. Um, but the interesting sort of takeaway from all of this is that there are attributes to, to you know, how you behave um, on, a, on a sexual spectrum that are not specifically connected to, you know, the shape of your external genitalia as was observed um, at the time that you were born. And there's some interesting sort of ways that this, that this manifests. Um, there is a group of people in the Dominican Republic um, for they, they think it's some sort of um, nourishment issue, but the boys, um, not all the boys, but some of the boys in like this certain sort of remote village don't have penises when they're born. They have what looks like female genitalia because, you know, the, the testicles are still up in the colloquial tubes when, when young boys are born. They haven't dropped yet. And also if their penis is very small and so their sack kind of looks like lips. No one really goes and like checks, you know, to see if it's a vagina in there as well. And so a lot of them are actually identified as female at birth because their genitalia looks female. Um, and then when puberty happens, their clitoris grows into a penis. Ta-da! And their testicles drop and all these other sorts of fun things happen. And this is, this is I bring this up to not, not because I want to like, you know, make them out to be like freaks of nature, but more to explain that the identifications that you can make upon birth are not actually as rock solid as we always thought they were. I mean, that's not even talking about intersex people who actually have ambiguous genitalia for a variety of reasons. That's just talking like people that who are born with genitals that just look a certain way and change into something else. But let's talk first about why our genitals do these sorts of things. Because what's interesting is a lot of people say things like, you know, we were all going to be women, until, except for until you get the X chromosome, sort of the Y chromosome that says you're going to be a guy, that your body will just naturally develop into a female state. And that's kind of true and kind of not true. Um, it, so what happens in a normal developmental scenario is that the, the baby either has, uh, is XX or XY. Now we have 46 chromosomes. One of them is the X at the very end. And we always say it's at the end. I don't know if it's actually at the end. I think it's at the end. And the pictures I've seen is at the end. Um, I've never verified myself by looking through a microscope at our DNA, at our chromosomes. But um, so you've got the X and you've got the Y. Um, the X chromosome basically is a standard human chromosome. And the Y chromosome is the grow testicles and a penis chromosome. Um, and I'm going to get into why that is in a little bit. I'm going to get into why the Y does that and why you don't actually need the Y to also develop as a male in some cases. And sometimes having the Y causes you to develop as a female. What the heck? All right. So um, and it's all the dad's fault whenever that happens to you. It's not the mom. Um, sorry, dad. Apologize. Um, so what happens is, is you've got, uh, when a baby is in the first trimester, they develop these things called gonads. And I love the fact that that's actually the name for them is gonads. Um, and these gonads will either turn into ovaries or they'll turn into testicles. And that depends on our good friend, testosterone. And I forget the full name of it. It's just DHT is a specific type of testosterone that happens in the womb um, during the first trimester. And if the body encounters that particular type of testosterone in the first trimester, the gonads turn into testicles and they move into colloquial tubes and they, they, they grow and they brew and they do their thing down there. Um, and the, the penis starts to grow and stuff like that as a result of, result of the presence of this testosterone. And this is all triggered by the SRY gene that lives in the Y chromosome most of the time. Um, and the SRY gene, if it detects this DHT um, testosterone, then it says, yay, we're making boy parts. And if it doesn't, then it's like, well, these are turned into ovaries and away we go. Um, and, and then the, the same, the muscular structure that forms a penis then grows inward versus outward is actually the the exact same muscular structure but for a penis and a vagina it's just a penis is just an outie vagina uh, and it mounts a little bit higher and stuff like that too because it mounts like more right on the pelvic bone rather than a little bit behind the pelvic bone um generally which is actually why men don't have as much of a pubis mons mons pubis mons pubis it's the mound right before the the genitalia as women do because women are a little bit set further back just because of this one this one thing um there's all sorts of dirty jokes that are coming into my mind right now. I'm going to refrain from diving into those. No dirty jokes on this chat so far. <laughs> so um, what happens then in the, in the case of like these kids in the Dominican is that their SRY gene is not receptive to DHY testosterone. However, their body still sort of generally sets up as male because it has generally male chromosomes. 
And when, when puberty hits, a more generic type of testosterone shows up, the DJFF, DGAF about anything. It's like you get this type of testosterone, you're a boy now, we're making boy parts. Um, and that's just what it does. So what happens to these kids is that in, th in theory, and I don't know if enough studies have been done on them, or if the studies I read didn't talk about this, whether or not their gonads had already turned to testicles, or if they turned it to turn it to testicles during puberty when um, when the generic, more generic, um, you know, shotgun version of testosterone hits you. Um, but the, 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 this this um, more generic version of testosterone says, you a boy now, and that's the, when that clitoris then grows into a penis. Um, <clears throat> now clearly, there's a lot more going on behind that as far as like where stuff goes and how the muscles form and what mounts where and all that jazz. But really sort of the, the general the gist of the whole thing is that um, what you're going to learn today is that it's really the hormones that make us boys or girls. And that one, that one presence of the SRY gene in the Y chromosome is just a switch that says, use these hormones, okay? Um, and the hormones do all of the work. Now, depending on your body only has a lot of like, I do this thing once and I'm not doing it again sort of stuff. So if your body's going to build out particular features, like it's going to turn gonads into ovaries or testicles, if you switch the hormones, like I've already done that, I'm not doing it again. I'm sorry. You can introduce all the estrogen you want. Your testicles aren't turning into ovaries. It's not going to happen. The body's like, forget it. I'm done. It's one and done. You don't get a new one. But there are certain things that actually can change. We're going to talk about those too. Um, but the, the interesting thing that you'll sort of get from that is that you know it's is these, these kids were almost like androgynous they didn't really have a male or female gender and um in many cases if they if you were to give them a little bit of estrogen instead of testosterone they probably would have developed except for maybe vaginas full female sex characteristics secondary sex characteristics now secondary sex characteristics are breasts um things like your shoulder width like women have shoulders that are as wide as their hips like i do if you notice in this picture you can see that that I'm a woman, therefore my, my shoulders are about as wide as my hips. Um, men's shoulders are usually about as wide as the inside of their rib cage. Um, men have more upper arm strength here, which I still have more of. You can kind of even see how my arms are curving out. I don't work out, and I've got kind of muscular arms. Um, women, I should say by the way, that women have wider hips, and that's what causes the, the ratio to be that way. And women generally have narrower rib cages and, and narrower ribs than men do. Um, and that's and other things. The other interesting thing that happens too is that the introduction of estrogen in greater quantities when a girl goes into puberty is actually what causes the growth plates on her ends of her bones to to harden and for her to stop growing. So girls that go through puberty earlier usually end up being shorter because the growth plates on the end of their bones harden sooner. So if you were to introduce the take these these semi androgynous uh, boys that happen to occur in the Dominican and probably elsewhere too. Um, <clears throat> and give them estrogen instead of testosterone, chances are they would almost entirely turn into biological females at that point. Um, and, and so um, we've, we learned through that and through some other studies and whatnot and, and a variety of things that it is more about the, the hormones and that the, the genes are really just switches for the hormones and then all the cells in the body say, I see the presence of hormone X and therefore I do Y, which is a terrible example. A and B, let's use I see hormone A and I do uh, thing, thing B. And the interesting thing to think, to consider, is that, um, and some people get this wrong, some people actually don't realize this, that my body has, I mean, we assume, as I mentioned in the last video, I assume I have XY chromosomes, but I possess all of the genetic information to build a girl, or all of genetic information to build a boy. My body can build either one, because in women, when they have these two X chromosomes, the second X chromosome is shut off. The, the, the body doesn't need the second X chromosome, so it actually, um, coats parts of the chromosome with this other um, protein so that the chromosome is not used and apparently this actually takes up a lot of effort from the um, uh, from the from the body to actually do this because every chrom every chromosome every cell in your body has all your chromosomes so every single cell in your body all the chromosomes have to have this thing coated and there's some interesting studies being done now where they're like actually it doesn't look like it actually fully coats it like women actually use like 90 percent of one x chromosome and 15 percent of the other chromosome and there's some overlap and all sorts of weird shit can happen um I don't know, they don't really know what the meaning of all that is yet. They're still doing a lot of study on that, but it does actually cause certain characteristics to occur and stuff like that, um, depending on how much of your chromosomes getting these heels, like to actually sit on the ring of the chair down there is difficult because <laughs> there's like the heel and the platform and all that. Um, but yeah, so it's they've, they've learned some interesting things about that too. So why I bring all this up is to basically say that like the, the physical characteristics that your body develops with has a lot more to do with the hormones. And in the first trimester, 
based on the chromosomal structure of the, of the child, the womb um, produces these certain hormones. And then the, so the first trimester, it's building gonads and it's turning them into testicles or ovaries. There's no brain yet in the first trimester for a baby. Brain doesn't show up till the second trimester. And what they've discovered is that if the chemical soup in the brain changes in the second trimester to have more estrogen or not as much testosterone or the other way around, um, the brain will actually develop with more features of the other gender. Um, and I use the word gender because we don't really have sex for brains. There's no sex aspect to brains. Brains are more about gender than sex. Um, and we've discovered that there are no male brains and there are no female brains, but there are features typically more found in males and t features typically more commonly found in female brains. Um, and that there's a mosaic. And like two men who have very masculine brains may not have the same pattern of masculinity in their brains. And two women who have very female brains may not have the same pattern of femininity in their brains. And there's a bell curve where it's like, okay, here's the man, man side and here's the girl side. And here's like the number of brains that are typical for that. And then they come down here and they cross over. And there are girls who have very masculine brains full of masculine features. And there are men who have very feminine brains full of masculine features. And this is why we've actually, they said like there are boy brains and girl brains and we've all got one. And it could be that like, I could be trans because I feel like, you know, in my head, I, I everything feels right when I'm a girl. Um, when I'm a boy, lots of things don't feel right. I feel uncomfortable with, with all sorts of things. Um, and I'm not going to get into gender dysphoria in detail in this video because that would just be a whole other video that would take us forever and it would hurt because gender dysphoria, like it, it would trigger my trans folks to have to read that and whatnot. This wig is like, keeps falling in front of my eyes. I need to soak it in magical goo, <clears throat> otherwise known as fabric softener. Um, so anyway, um, so yeah, there, there are differences in brains and you could have someone who, another guy, another guy a guy who identifies as a guy who is identified for um, a, a M a B assigned male at birth who has a brain just as feminine as mine, but it could be feminine in different ways that don't mess with his sort of gender perception of himself. Whereas my brain is feminine in the ways that have messed with the gender perception of myself. And I feel much more comfortable as a girl. I also feel more comfortable the way that society interacts with me as a girl and being seen as a girl and be part of the sisterhood and stuff like that. Um, and I talk about that in my book as well why a lot of the more details about that so so it is entirely possible that your brain could you know develop slightly or even greatly um in a different gendered way than the rest of your body based on the fact it's developed it's 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 gender features are made at a different time that your body's sex features are made and that the womb could change the chemical composition during during those times um, and that may be due to the mother's genetics, that may be due to the father's genetics. A lot of the father's genetics actually affect what the womb does with the baby, um, just as much as the mothers do. So it could be going either way. We don't fully understand that yet, but we do know that it is happening. So you say to yourself, like, how often could this be happening? This can't be that common. Well, it's, it's a determined that transgender people make up about 1% to 2% of the population, which seems really small until you consider that we're like the freaking population of Massachusetts in the United States. There's 6 million of us in the US. If you go to the school of 2000 people, there are 20 transgender people in that school. Like that's a lot. And how many are out? Like how many, like I'm talking binary transgender people who are like want to be all the way over and they knew this before puberty. There's gonna be 20 of them in your, in your school of 2000 people. Now we don't, you know, the study has barely even begun on transgender people. We don't have a lot of good details on non-binary people, but they seem to number almost twice as many in some cases as binary transgender people. Um, they may not experience dysphoria. It could be this for a lot of them. It's more of a social thing. Um, I know I know a lot of non-binary people who do actually have dysphoria where their body feels wrong, but it doesn't feel right male and it doesn't feel right female. Um, so it could be that you have in a school of 2000 people, you could have 50 to 60 people who are you know gender non um, transgender or gender non-conforming in some fashion where they don't you know they don't fit into the binary or or they or they're on the wrong side of the binary that's a lot of people that's more people than than have like you know in most schools have like I'm just messing this wig up that's more people in most schools than have you know significant physical disabilities that's more people than have you know a variety of like you know serious diseases like cystic fibrosis and whatnot and so. 
we accommodate those people as we should because they have needs and you know that one of the great hallmarks of being in a civilization where we are civilized is that we actually do things to you know make life easier for those of us who who have issues in our society because we can because we're not like just like struggling every day just put food on the table and keep the the bears from clawing down the door and you know the the angry um, people from the other village attacking us or anything like that. We have the means to actually take care of people. And that's actually a really important measure of our society to do so, is to take care of other people in our society. But there are, you know, when it comes to like, you know, I guess I bring this up because some people say, well, you're so aware we shouldn't really accommodate you. Um, there's so few of you that you shouldn't be accommodated, but there's a lot of us, you know, like we're talking at least in a school of 2000, which is like a, a mid-sized city's high school, 20 people are binary trans. You know, and that's a, that's, a, that's a significant number of people in that school, you know, who all of them need to use the bathroom, you know, all of them need to um, have some sort of understanding, some sort of understanding needs to be made as to how they're going to use restrooms, uh, change rooms, um, how does sports work? I don't know. I don't have the answer to sports. Sports are like outside my wheelhouse, but it's an issue. It needs to be solved. Um, it's not an option just to say these people that you don't matter enough for us to, con to take care of you in society. You know, that's not an option. That's not a thing we can do. So um, let's get back to the, you know, how things are all put together. So back in 1959, they started doing some interesting studies with guinea pigs and they took these female guinea pigs and they gave them testosterone at certain times in the womb. Um, and they, they did a bunch of experiments and figured out the optimal times. And what they found is that these female guinea pigs exhibited male mating behaviors and actually tried to mount other females and have sex with them as though they're trying to penetrate them with a penis which is not a thing that female guinea pigs do. And that's sort of the first time when it was really determined that sexual behavior is based off of um, biology and not sort of conscious intent. It wasn't that, you know, these things want to impregnate, therefore they do this thing that they understand. No, it was actually just like, it was hormones telling them to do the thing. Well, the hormones didn't tell them to do the thing. The hormones flooded their body and then the cells in the body said, hey, I'm a gendered, I'm a, I'm a, I, I have a sex. Every cell in your body has a sex. And they're like, okay, I'm going to do the thing um, that, that I'm told to do when, when, when I encounter this hormone in, in great quantities. And, and so these things happen. And they, they determined that, that basically this is, this is how it works. It's, it's actually determined by hormones. But they didn't do a lot of study on humans yet until around the 80s because you know you don't just want to start off you know, like figuring out like what do we do with humans in the womb yay fun you know we'll just inject different hormones in them and see what happens when they grow up um but what they started doing in the age they started studying the brains of, of humans and they've been studying the brains of men primarily for quite a while in the 80s they started to study the brains of women and they discovered two things um, one they discovered the brains of women are notably different than the brains of men um, but they discovered like crap it's not like a a b thing it's not like these are all we obviously female brains and these are all obviously male brains are like shit they contain like a whole cross section of features it's like a matrix of um of different male female features and so what happened as a result of that is that they um they there was too many variables basically for them to study brains they couldn't they couldn't focus on learning what it does and having to deal with like this massive number of male and female brains they needed to use to narrow things down and, and, in, and so you, they picked male brains. Now, before you sit there and say, oh, great, yeah, they did studies on men again, which is what they do. Most studies are actually done on men primarily and sometimes never on women. Um, and certainly not on trans people. Although they were kind of like this fascinating thing where they're like, we can like maybe spot differences by studying trans people. But um, what happened is that uh, this was right when the feminist movement was really catching, uh, catching up. And so they, I need to pause a moment and clear my throat. Ooh, it's getting raspy down here. All right, so th this time in the 80s, they, the feminist movement was catching on, and they're like, you know what? If we start saying that women actually have different brains and they're not like, then, then we're going to have all the people who are opposing the feminist movement say things like, well, women really are different, and therefore they can't do men things because their brains are different than men. And they'd be like, go make me a sandwich, you know, and stuff like that. So um, they actually sort of a deliberate choice not to study women's brains at that time because they didn't want to add fuel to the fire. Of all these people that were basically saying that women women are, are too different um, than men and, and can't be equal as a result so it was actually almost a deliberate choice and they've really only been studying women's brains a lot for like the last decade and it's still they study more men's brains we're not nearly up on women's brains as compared to men's brains so people are sitting there saying like there's no difference between men and women's brains and all these studies it's like they've done barely any studies and the studies they have done say yes they are different 
They're not always different in the same way, but women, gener generally speaking, have different brains. And the lion's share of women have different brains than the lion's share of men. Um, and also that all men and women contain features of the opposite sex gender's brains in their brains to different quantities, different quantities and in different ways. Um, so when people say like there's no such thing as a male brain, no such thing as a female brain, they are basically saying that there's no there's no A B. You can't sit there and say like you know female brains always have this and male brains always have that. But there are features more commonly found in male brains and features more commonly found in female brains. And again, I'm going to link to an article that really gets into this in a lot of detail. And this isn't a transgender article. This is actually an article about studies being done in the male brain to understand why the male brain men actually have. Um, neurological diseases more often than women. Men are more likely to get dementia and Alzheimer's and a variety of other things like that. Um, and they think it's due to inflammation. They're trying to figure out why men's brains have more inflammation than women's brains. Um, and that's why the study is being done. It just happens to also touch on some gender aspects as well, which is why I think it's a great study because no one can point at it and say the study has an ax to grind, you know, or is out there trying to make a point. So with all of this in mind, we know about brains and we know about hormones, but let's talk about what like, hormones can do later on. So some of the things that hormones do, for example, is, well, actually, let's talk about some of the things hormones do that are weird. Like, so I actually had a thing called, oh God, it's called gynomophilia or something like that. It basically means, means I grew boobs. Um, and this happened to me. So there's, 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 man boob is a real thing. Men actually have like some elements of the breast tissue, the same sort of like breast tissue that women get when they actually grow breasts. So it's a very small amount. And as men get older and or have certain types of conditions and or get overweight, that breast tissue can grow along with the rest of their body um, and they get man boobs and man boobs aren't just fat, fat pockets they're actually contain breast the same sort of mammary breast tissues um, they don't contain the duct work to actually produce milk but women's don't normally either unless they're pregnant um, the duct work grows and it goes away after pregnancy which is why a lot of women experience they're all happy with their breast during pregnancy and or unhappy and then they change afterwards and they're happy or unhappy again um, I talked to a lot of women who are like I wish I could have the boobs I had when I was pregnant they were amazing um, and or breastfeeding Anyway, um, the, the interesting thing is that um, there are a certain group of people who start to men um, or, or assigned male at birth individuals, I should say, who some of them are men and some of them are trans eventually and stuff like that, um, who actually start growing breasts in their teens, like before puberty really kicks in. And this is there's a couple of they don't know exactly why they haven't done enough studies just on this group of people. Um, they sort of studied the whole issue, the issue as a whole, but not the people who get it just in their early teens. But what it does sort of point to is that without the introduction of puberty levels of testosterone, the human body will develop into a female. Um, and if, for example, I've been on testosterone blockers in my er early teens, my body probably would have, excepting the fact I already had a penis and testicles, I would have actually developed the, the secondary sex characteristics of a woman. I would have not broadened my shoulders. My hips would have widened um, more than they have now. And um, I wouldn't have grown such a large rib cage, and I probably would have been shorter um, uh, if, if the testosterone had been blocked and probably enough estrogen was introduced to trigger all of those changes. If the testosterone had just been blocked, I would have just been kind of androgynous um, as a result of that. Um, so that's sort of an interesting thing that we've learned. And it's, it, they're, they're, they want to do some studies on trans women who had, um, it's I, I'm just butchering it. I'll, I'll put a link to some information about it in the in the, the bottom of the video. But they're, they're, they want to do some studies on this and try to understand, like, is there actually a connection between, um, you know, these, these trans women who had more female hormone loadouts before, before puberty? Um, that maybe that actually did alter their brain chemistry, you know, when they were younger and caused them brain chemistry and brain structure when they were younger to give them more female um, attributes. Because what they've also learned is that as I take more and more estrogen, uh, my brain will actually develop more and more like a woman's brain and less and be less and less like a man's brain in a variety of, of areas that have to do with um, um, the thickness of white, white matter and stuff like that in the brain and a couple other areas. Um, and it, it varies per person too. I mean, they haven't like sliced open a lot of trans people's brains while they're undergoing all this stuff to see you know, or done MRIs on a lot of us. But hopefully that will, that will sort of progress as time goes on. But, um, but my brain will demonstrably, if, if I was to have an MRI done before and then one after, will, will demonstrably have more female features after being on estrogen and have testosterone blocked for a number of years. So it could be that, you know, up until like age 12 or 13, I think I was like 12 or 13 when I started growing breasts. Um, up until then, it could be that I had a much more heavy estrogen um, mix in my body and a lower testosterone mix. And that's actually what, actually what caused um, this to happen to me. Or it just could be that it's just a thing and it has nothing to do with any of that. We don't actually know. I sort of think it's just an interesting point to show that like the human body and the way it develops is actually based on these hormones 
not on the genetics. Because like I said, an a XY body contains all the information to make a female, and an XX body contains all the information to make a male. The, the, y, the y chromosome has almost no information in it. It doesn't contain anything that has to do with, with making people of a certain sort. It's really just this receptor for testosterone that is used in the womb to make testicles. And then when puberty hits, the testicles are what produces the testosterone that turns you into a man. It's not that the Y gene has nothing to do with it at that point. It really just was there to say, your gonads, gonads become testes. And if it's not there, your gonads don't become testes. So I want to take a little segue here because we top, pop back into chromosomes. And I think I feel like I've laid, laid a bunch of groundwork to talk about all the times when we are not 46 XY. We normally have 46 chromosomes, two of them are XY. So we're called 46 XY. Um, there are people that have three X's. Um, typically, if you see a woman who is over six feet tall and is, is thin versus like really built, because if she's really built, she's probably trans like me. No, I'm kidding. That's terrible. There are actually a lot of women who are like six foot four, are, are thicker like I am. Um, and are totally female. I have had kids, like they're fertile women. Um, they have all the parts. Um, but you also see some they are very thin. They're very, they're very wasp, waif, waifish. Um, and they're, they're usually like six foot to six foot four. And usually they have three X chromosomes. They're triple X. There are women that have four X chromosomes. There are women that have five X chromosomes. There are people who have four X chromosomes and a Y, or three X chromosomes and a Y, or two X chromosomes and a Y. And and sometimes those people develop as male and sometimes those people develop as female. There are women who have XO chromosomes. The O is, is, a, is a chromosome that's been damaged um, and it causes them to grow certain features as a result. Um, but there's, there's also things like there are identical twins. They were born in Australia recently, the most recent ones. And one's a boy, one's a girl. They are genetically identical because they both contain a full set of female and male um, DNA. They're XXXY. And there's two types of that. One is where you're just you have three X's that are the same and a Y. And what these ones have like the chromosomes of the of the girl version of themselves and the full chromosomes of the boy version of themselves. And what happens is that uh, when the body encounters an incorrect number of chromosomes, it tries to it shuts certain ones off. It's like we don't need all this shit. We're just gonna we're gonna shut you off, just like it does for the 46th X chromosome on a girl. It coats the um, the chromosome with some protein, so it doesn't use it. And so in these scenarios where you have these these um, these twins that have full loadouts of either chromosome, the body works to, to disable certain chromosomes. Um, the Y usually prevails. So in most of these scenarios where they have a full loadout of both chromosomes, they, they're both boys. But in this one instance with this one girl, the Y did not prevail. The body for some reason prefers the Y. Why we don't know. Um, but it, it does this and then and then you end up usually with, with them both being boys in this scenario. But, but in this one case, the X1 and you had a girl. So a girl and a boy, identical twins, exact same DNA. Anytime you see someone who has two different color eyes, they're a chimera. And a chimera is someone that has um, two different types of DNA in their body. Um, and so a lot of times this DNA is that they've, they've absorbed in some respect the DNA of a, of a, a twin or a sibling in the womb. And, um, and so that's, and that's actually now mixed up in their body. And that's why they have two different color of eyes. Well, sometimes statistically, it's probably 50%. I don't know if anyone's actually done a big enough study to know what it, if there's any sort of condition that causes it to be one way more than the other. But statistically, you're probably looking at like a 50, 50. So every single time you see someone with two different color of eyes, they could actually have both male and female DNA in them, which is where it gets a little bit interesting when people start saying, well, in sports, just test them to see if they're a boy or a girl. Well, there's lots of times when girls have Y chromosomes in their bodies, and that's one of them. Um, other times, if they're if they're like XXXY, and the body disables the Y and keeps, or even just XXY, disables the Y and keeps the Xs, they're going to have Y chromosomes, but they're disabled, and they're going to be fully female. They'll have never gone through male puberty. They won't have the male physical strength or height or broad shoulders or anything like that. They're going to have completely female attributes and female bone structure and whatnot, but also have a Y chromosome. Um, Anytime a woman gives birth to a boy, she's going to have Y chromosomes in her body for the rest of her life. Um, even like in her brain matter, they're going to find Y chromosomes. They found Y chromosomes in the, in the brains of dead women who had kids decades earlier. They say sort of the normal is about 20 years that you're going to have Y chromosomes, but in some cases they seem to stick around forever, and specifically in the brain, because the brain doesn't recycle uh, things quite as often as the rest of your body, whereas your skin, like in seven years, it's entirely new every seven years. I think that's what it is. Oh, every atom in your body is changed out theoretically in seven years, but it doesn't actually work that way because some stick around for a variety of reasons. Um, like heavy metal toxic toxicity. If every atom in your body changed every seven years, seven years, all the heavy metals will be gone. Score! But um, that's neither here nor there. That's crazy shit. Let's not talk about that. 
So we're so we've we've learned that there's like a whole bunch of different types of chromosomes in the human body, and and they they come together in a lot of different patterns and for reasons, and they do different things, and they create humans that don't exactly fit into this male female binary. I mean, there's the intersex people oftentimes have have um, chromosomal conditions that cause this as well, and then we also have a scenario where um, where your chromosomes are like double loaded and you you have both chromosomes for male and female and your body sort of just picks which one it's going to do but remember before i said there was leakage even in women they're finding that the the disabled chromosome the the 46 x chromosome um some parts of it do things so you're going to end up with these people that might actually have these scenarios where they've got some parts of their of their disabled Y chromosome in a female body is doing things, or in a male body, some parts of one of the disabled X chromosomes is doing things. Now you're lucky because the X chromosome seems to mostly just contain stuff to do with intelligence. So you're just gonna be freaking smart, you know, but um, it does other things too, but they're, they've learned that there's some specific intelligence traits that are in the X chromosome. But most of us only ever use one X chromosome with a little bit bleeding over. And that's why girls are a little bit smarter because they're actually like getting a little bit of extra intel boost from that second X chromosome they got going on there. Um, and then you've also got other things that happen too. Like um, I mentioned that there's the SRY gene that is, is on the Y chromosome. And that's the one that says, yo, if I see testosterone, if I'm here, then when this testosterone hits, you get in testes. And if not, you get in ovaries. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice is getting so raspy. This is my first take too. I gotta work, I need to, I had coffee today. I have to, I have to cut out coffee, I think. It's, my sister says like a blowtorch to the, to the vocal cords. But you know, I kind of always figured like if I was gonna be like a, like, like really pull off this female thing, I think I could do like a Murphy Brown voice. Maybe I'm actually transitioning towards having like a, a sexy Murphy Brown voice. I kind of like that. This is so far off topic, but, um, so you end up with these people who, who have a faulty SRY gene. It's not receptive to that type of um, testosterone that occurs in the womb. Um, and so the, the body develops um, in a female fashion. Sorry, this is like was, got, was stuck in my arm, in my elbow pit, and it was hurting me. That's the one downside to, to latex is sometimes you get, it can bunch up in weird places. Usually for me, only in the, in the elbow here on a tight shirt. Um, but um, yeah, so you, you end, they, they, what happens is that they, this is like what happens for the kids in the Dominican, but these women never actually grow male sex features. They actually have, in many cases, so they have XY chromosomes, but where their ovaries should be are two testicles, and they don't drop this step here. And their clitoris remains a clitoris because the testicles, for whatever reason, don't produce the full amount of testosterone to actually cause male puberty to happen. I think in some cases they do because I've heard stories of like they having to remove the testicles so the so that they can actually, oops, I, I think maybe they do because I've heard that um, that they remove the testicles so they don't cause problems later on. So you don't like have like this sort of ambiguous semi-female, semi-male body. Um, some of them actually have functional vaginas. To my knowledge, nobody with this particular condition has a uterus. So they're, they're, these are women that are infertile. And it could be that for many, for much of the history, women that are infertile or who don't have uteruses actually had because of this, they were actually had XY chromosomes and their bodies developed as female because of this particular condition. Um, there's another condition that happens. So as you know, it's the, it's the sperm that determines whether or not the, 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 um, the baby's going to develop as a male or female. You have, you have X, you have Y sperm carrying the Y chromosome and sperm carrying the X chromosome. Um, and depending on which sperm, um, hits the egg, that's the one that you end up being. Um, which is why you can have scenarios, like I mentioned before with the twins, where it must have been that at the exact same instance, you know, a, a male sperm and a female sperm hit the egg together. I assume that's what happens. I didn't actually, like I said, I didn't look at the, the details on that. Um, was that flipped up the whole time? That's kind of embarrassing. Anyway. Um, so you, so when, when the, the sperm is made with the correct chromosomes, the body actually is like building new DNA as a work. It's like doing like some sort of like Lego transformers thing and putting the DNA into the, into the sperm. And there's a process where it assigns all the genes to all the right chromosomes so they can go do their thing. And sometimes that pesky little SRY gene that normally goes on the Y chromosome ends up on the X chromosome. And you end up with X chromosomes that will make boys, which is kind of crazy. So you can have someone, so you can have boys out there with full X, with X, X chromosomes, not a Y chromosome in their body. Um, I don't know if these people are fertile or not. I didn't research that particular one enough to know if they actually grow a full uterus and if they're, and if they're fertile or not, um, or if they end up in the same scenario where they also have, um, they have or the opposite scenario where they have ovaries where their testicles should be. 
No, they must have testicles because they go through secondary puberty properly. Anyway, it's kind of wild to think that, right? They've got, so you're, this whole thing, like, we'll just test their chromosomes. You got XX, you're a girl. You got XY, you're a boy. It's like, no, 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 you don't. That's not how it works. It's, it's the hormones. And the chromosomes are just triggers for the hormones. And the hormones are not as consistent as we'd like to think them to be. They're just not. Um, if you know 100 people, you probably know like five people who have one of these conditions where their bodies don't have a 46XY or 46XX loadout. It's shockingly common. It's more common than a lot of diseases that we worry about all the time. Um, but we don't worry about as much because it doesn't cause problems until you have people like me or you have people who are intersex um, and need to change because they're, they were assigned the wrong thing at birth. Because intersex people have ambiguous genitalia and typically they just turn them into girls because it's easier. Um, when, they, when they used to have babies, they don't do as much as babies anymore. They're like, we're just going to let this thing ride and see what happens, um, which is a much better plan. Um, but, but you end up with these scenarios where people have, have, were identified as one thing at birth, and it turns out that they're supposed to be another thing. And sometimes it's to do with, with um, their, 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 what their gonads turned into, and sometimes that's to do with what their brain turned into. And we've got all this societal stigma around it right now, which is really what causes most of the problems. If we weren't, if people like, were like, you know what, we, we, did, we don't really know how to tell about all this stuff yet, but you kind of seem like you want to be a girl, so why don't you try it? And if you like it, and you go through life living as a girl, then you're a girl, and that's all there is to it. And if you want to try and be a boy, and you want to go through life living as a boy, then you can do that, and that's all there is to it as well. Because, and this sort of touches into the previous conversation, the video I had last time about, like, are trans women appropriating femininity? Um, a lot of a lot of women I talk to say like basically if you're living the female experience you're a woman and not every woman you know some people say well if you don't bleed you're not a woman well not every woman bleeds for a variety of reasons are they not women you know um, because they might have medical conditions they might have had a hysterectomy they might have not been born with a uterus they might have a UID you know that works really well and they never have periods um, but the female the female experience is not just genitalia the female experience is how you present yourself, how society perceives you, how you move through society. So I feel like if we if we said like, okay, it's it's a freaking soup, and and nobody really can tell what you are, it's at least not right now. We certainly don't have the ability to do it, to do it well right now. Um, and you could take a blood test. You could have like half the women around could take blood tests and for a variety of reasons. They might come back with male attributes in their in their blood more women than men because of like that whole childbirth thing. If you birth boys, you got Y chromosomes floating around, and you have higher testosterone too, by the way. Um, and that, of course, that's the other thing happens in menopause. Women have much higher testosterone because the estrogen production goes down. They get more testosterone. That's why a lot of the ladies, when they get older, they're like, you know, I ain't taking no shit no more. Because the testosterone, it's more like I'm overconfident, I'm aggressive, takes over. And estrogen, which is more like I might be wrong, I'm going to be empathetic, is drawn back. Um, those are hyper generalities, but they but they are traits that, that are commonly caused by the, by, the, um, by the hormones. So I feel like if society was more accepting of people just trying out a gender that fits um, a lot of people might try it and go back they might say you know what this wasn't for me i was just trying it it didn't really fit or maybe this other thing fits or maybe it's for me it's more gender expression than actual gender that i that is the right thing for me but there's so much stigma around transitioning these days a lot of people that transition and might have regret don't want to transition back or a lot of people that do tra want to transition can't because they're scared um and we and there, what we're learning is that there's various levels of transition. There's people have different amounts of gender dysphoria, and it probably has to do with like the the chemical construction of their body. You know what what amounts of testosterone and estrogen they've been producing all their lives, how their brains been wired as a result, the physical makeup of their brain. You know the the white matter uh, thickness of, of the various structure sections of the brain. All of these things are affected by by the presence of estrogen and testosterone in your body for for, for your the, as you go through your life. So. I really feel like if we were if we were more accepting of people just sort of experimenting to see what fit for them, we wouldn't we wouldn't just cause so as much difficulty as we cause for people. But um, I'm gonna I think I've probably rambled on long about this long enough about this. I think I've made all the points that I wanted to make. I should probably start scripting these, but I kind of feel like I talk better when I'm a little more off the cuff. Um, but I, I feel like the the thing to take away is that is that the chromosomes are just switches that the body may or may not obey for a variety of reasons and what it really comes down to is what hormones are in your body and those hormones will change you like uh what this is the final point i want to make this is why i felt like i was missing something um for women trans women who, who are on testosterone what they find this depends on a variety of depends much a lot in many cases on when you start taking it how far along the body is and its processes because like i said your body some things your body only does once so once the the bone plates on the end of your bones harden and the bones stop growing introducing testosterone is not going to make that happen they're not going to unharden and start growing again. Um, 
But um, if you take it soon enough, then, then it actually, or you stop the estrogen soon enough, then it, it will actually grow. One thing that a lot of trans men experience for sure is that their voices will deepen because testosterone thickens your vocal cords. The vast majority of them start growing body hair because testosterone does that. And that's the thing that testosterone does, not estrogen. So some of these features that we're used to, and even like the face features, like thickness of the jaw and stuff like that, happens from testosterone because your face will grow more because there's no test, there's no estrogen. Well, I guess it happens more from the lack of estrogen than from the presence of testosterone. But depending, on, so depending on when you make these changes to the hormonal structure of your body, you can actually change the outcome. You can change the way your body develops. My body is growing breasts because that's one thing that it can do um, later on. It doesn't have to, it's not having to undo anything. It's able to take the existing breast tissue it has and it's growing breasts. I'm getting wider hips. My body is actually, I'm wearing a corset right now because I want to look good in this outfit. But my body is going to take fat from here. It's going to shift it down. It's going to start storing it on my hips more and my, 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 my butt more. That's the thing that estrogen does and the lack of testosterone does. And so this is like, just kind of goes to show that the way that our bodies work and even like internal things, like I have to worry about, about um, female or female related diseases now as a result of, of what I'm doing. I'm going to have to get mammograms at some point in the future. Remember, I mean, cancer though just has to do with, you can get cancer anywhere. You just have to check all the places um, is what, what that has more to do with than, um, than the fact that women are more likely to get breast cancer just because there's more tissue. Um, and it's because of estrogen. and There's like crazy stuff. Like if you have a lot of estrogen and not enough I've never said that word out loud before, progesterone, um, then you, you can actually get uh, cancer as a result of that. So I'll actually have to take progesterone. I'm, this is so terrible. This word always is pronounced perfectly in my brain, um, and now I can't do it. But anyway, it's, it's another type of estrogen. This is um, one that's actually commonly used in birth control pills. It's also estrogen that is used for women who, um, they have a condition where during their periods, the the uterine lining that's supposed to grow inside the uterus like grows in random places in their abdomen basically um so they can take progesterone oh my god i feel so terrible about this one someone's gonna mock me incessantly and it's it's okay i've earned it you can mock me i won't cry much i promise all right so yeah so it's basically the, the testosterone will make a man out of you whether you like it or not you know um estrogen will never thin my vocal cords that, that's a one and done thing the vocal cords thicken they're set they're done they're not going to thin again unless you get surgery but i'm not getting no one's slicing and dicing on my vocal cords no thank you i got the heebie-jeebies just thinking about that um so i hope this was informative um if there's any specific questions that are things i didn't cover very well or things that were kind of confusing drop, drop me a note in the comments um again i would love it if you were to subscribe like comment and ring the bell I'm super close to getting 100 subscribers, which means that I'll actually get to have a swanky channel name, which I'm excited about because I'm not just like a random hash of uh, numbers and letters. And um, I look forward to talking to you next time. See you, Malcontents.